file and application management. In this nugget, we're going to start with a quick orientation, actually a pretty detailed orientation, of Finder, the application that's running on your Mac all the time that lets you manage files, folders, applications, and so forth. Then we'll actually talk about managing them, um, how to look at the properties of a file, work with permissions on a folder, uh, look inside of an app, we'll even look at how to remove an application or copy an application. And we'll finish up with a look at Spotlight, the built-in desktop-wide search functionality uh, that's built into every Mac that can help you find applications or files or folders or, or whatever it is, no matter where it is on your Mac, uh, in case you've lost track of it. So let's start with some basic orientation in Finder. Now remember, this is sort of the equivalent of uh, Windows Explorer. It's how you're going to work with the files and the folders on the computer, and uh, Finder is an application that is always running. Uh, in fact, you scroll to the bottom and you, you pop your dock up, you can see that that little glowing dot is always going to be under the Finder icon. You've got a couple of ways to open a new Finder window. Uh, you can do what I just did, which is double click one of the volumes that's on your desktop. Uh, you can also just click the little Finder icon. Now, because I've already got a Finder window open, clicking that in the dock will just take me to that window. Um, if you click on the desktop, you'll get the Finder menu bar at the top of the screen. You can go to the Go menu and then select one of these locations to go to. That'll also open a new window, as will going to the File menu and selecting a new Finder window. So you've got lots of different ways you can get a new window open. Uh, one thing that can be kind of a little tricky, I've opened a window here. Let me go somewhere. Let me go to my Applications folder. Now if I double-click that hard drive again, it's going to open another window that goes to that hard drive. Uh, so that will always open that particular volume. Now let's just kind of take a look at the overall file system. Um, you kind of start at the top level with the devices that you've got attached. Um, my Macintosh hard drive is the one that's installed locally in the laptop. The remote disk feature uh, in this particular laptop is going to allow me to use a remote machine's CD-ROM or DVD-ROM or whatever else, uh, provided the user of that machine has given me permission. It'll let me use that as a local disk. That can be really useful for Macs that don't have a built-in optical drive. Uh, it'll let you use someone else's optical drive across the network. You can even do it with uh, a Windows-based optical drive. You just need to download the right bit of software or uh, install the remote disk sharing software from the OS X installation DVD. Um, iDisk uh, connects to uh, a network-based disk on Apple's mobile me service. You can go to these shared computers, all the computers on the network that are sharing something. Uh, places are different places that exist on the local computer. So your desktop, your documents folder, your home folder, your applications folder, and so forth. Uh, and then you've also got search functionality, which is something we're going to cover just a little bit later. So let's kind of start now with uh, the top level of the Macintosh hard drive. The applications folder is the same as that one that was under places, uh, where it said applications. Uh, that gets you to the global system-wide set of applications, um, the ones that are shared by everybody who uses this computer. Uh, some Macs will have this developer folder, which is where Apple keeps some of their top-level development applications. Uh, so if someone has installed a, a development software development kit, uh, such as the OS X SDK, or uh, maybe the iPhone SDK, you'll find all that there. Library is kind of where a lot of the different application support stuff is kept. And again, because we're at the top level of the Mac's file system right now, uh, we're looking at stuff that's global, so it's shared by every application on the computer. Uh, you can see that there's an application support folder, and this contains different folders for a lot of the different applications. Um, Microsoft, that'll be for Microsoft Office probably, iPhoto, um, you know, tablet, Mozilla, any, anything like that. And at that same level as application support, you'll find things that are kind of for the operating system in general. Um, audio, so you'll find some Apple loops and some MIDI configuration stuff. That's all pre-installed with OS X. Uh, color sync, uh, desktop pictures, again, these are the ones that are default and installed along with OS X. File system drivers, um, documentation, that's where you'll find the help files, and so forth. So that's the library. System is where the actual um, operating system files live. So we've got automator files and contextual menu items and um, core services for OS X and these are all the, the different core things. So this is kind of on Windows equivalent to uh, the Windows System 32 folder. 
Uh, you really want to kind of avoid messing with anything in here because this is what makes the operating system work. Um, user guide information. This is actually just a little shortcut. You can see the little arrow on there. And then the users folder uh, has a separate subfolder for each user who has a local account. And then there's this shared, which is kind of a, this is an area where any user of this machine can drop files. I can drag files here and every user of the machine will be able to get to them. So it's kind of like the file sharing that you can set up on a, a Windows computer when it's not in a domain. And it's just using that sort of home mode where you can have multiple people logged on at once. Same basic kind of idea. Uh, and then if you click on a particular user's home folder, you'll find their desktop folder, their documents folder, uh, their downloads folder, their library. Um, and this is a, a library that's different from the system-wide library. This contains application preferences and operating system preferences that are unique to this user. So if we click on application support, you're actually going to see a, a much larger lineup of applications because most applications do store their preferences on a per user basis. Uh, so we've got all this stuff going on in here. Um, in individual application, th this is kind of rare, this thing with here with Logitech. Um, this is to support um, some of the different uh, you know, peripheral devices that Logitech makes that I, I have installed on this computer. And it's unusual for an application to stick a folder out at this level, but Logitech chooses to do so. Um, Apple also automatically creates these movies, folders, music, pictures, uh, and then public. But well, Sites is also one that it creates. Public is kind of interesting, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, sites is for any locally created websites. Um, all Macs actually have a built-in web server using the Apache software. And so this is uh, where it defaults to look for web website files, you know, your, your index page and any pictures or any media you're going to make available off of that local web server. Now, the public folder is kind of interesting. The way the permissions are configured on this by default is that if this Mac is sharing files on the network, then everyone will always be able to see this public folder and they will be able to write files to this Dropbox but they won't be able to read files from it uh, and that's where it gets its name Dropbox so if you're sharing files using this Mac this is a way for people to copy files to your Mac but not be able to execute them or do anything with them uh, and so this is probably a good time to show you how to look at those permissions uh, you can look at the permissions and all the other details uh, any, on any file or folder, and much the same way you can in Windows. You just right click and select Get Info. And so this little info dialog box will appear, and you can kind of expand these little sections by hitting the little triangles to make them bigger or smaller, or you can scroll through this if it's too big. Uh, so this has got any comments that we've entered for Spotlight, and let's just enter one now. This is a write only folder for anyone. We can see the computer on the network. Uh, so this is just a, a free entry. You can enter anything you want there. And uh, when we look at Spotlight, the search functionality, you'll see where that comes into play. Uh, so the general section is telling us that this is a folder. Uh, there's nothing in it, so it occupies zero kilobytes. This is its physical location on the disk if you need to find it. When it was created, when it was modified, uh, we can give it a label. And that just changes the color of it, or we can take the label away. We can indicate that it's a shared folder for users of this local computer, uh, or we can lock the folder and basically prevent any changes. So we'll collapse that section, go to more info, see what's in there. This is just telling us the last time the folder was opened. Now, different files can populate different information under more info. So if you're looking at a, a Word document, maybe, or a QuickTime file, you'll see different stuff under more info. Folders obviously aren't as interesting as files, and so they don't have as much in there. Uh, we can change the name and extension. Now, Macs allow you to hide the file name extension on a per file basis. This uh, uh, checkbox isn't enabled. You'll see that I can't click it. And that's because this isn't a file. It's a folder. Um, but this is where you could change the name. One of the places you could change the name. Uh, preview just lets you see the icon. So, not, not much to look at there. If you double click it, it'll open it back up just like it did there. And finally, they're sharing and permissions. So, we can see, let me make this window just a little bit larger. Uh, we can see that my user account has read and write permissions um, and this staff group that I've created has write only and the everyone group uh, which is everyone that it, it, this is a special group this is everyone uh, no matter whether they have an account or they're part of a group or anything they also have write only mode. You can change that by just hitting the little drop down there. Oops it seems I can't. Uh, 
That's because this lock icon is locked. So let's click that to unlock it. This is going to ask me to enter my password. Now you'll notice that these kind of stopped being grayed out, so I can go down and change this. Uh, so I could say no access, read only, write, uh, read and write, or we'll go ahead and leave it at write only. And uh, you can hit the plus to add someone else. So if I wanted to give someone else read and write permissions like I have, I could do that. And uh, I can apply this to the enclosed items as well. So once I change these permissions, they're only going to modify the folder itself and any new items that are created. But what I can also do is say I want to apply these to the items that are inside the folder. Now, am I sure I want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. Actually, there's nothing in there, so it didn't take it very long. You could see it tried to pop up a, a progress bar there, but didn't actually need to. So we'll go ahead and lock this, prevent any future changes, and uh, close the dialog box. So that's how you can work with, with file and folder properties and permissions. Uh, let's hop into my documents folder, and I've got a, a little text document here that will check the info on. Uh, same idea, sharing folder permissions, um, open with. Because this is a file, we can configure what application this uh, opens with, and it's going to open with the built-in text edit. I can select anything else, uh, click other to go select any application. These are sort of the recommended applications. Uh, change its name and extension. You'll notice that this does have a .rtf extension, but it's set to hidden. And that's why it doesn't show up over here in the main finder window. If I uncheck that, now the RTF shows up. So if you like to see your file name extensions, that's how you can do it. And uh, here's the stuff that was in the more info for this particular type of file. Uh, the date the content was created, when it was last modified, and when it was last opened. So always you know, feel free just to right click something and do get info. Um, there is a shortcut for that. So if we click this and come up to the view menu, I believe, um, nope, not the view menu. I, I lose track of this a lot because I'm, I'm so used to just right clicking. Let's see here, get info. The uh, open command key and I will do get info for you. Now some other stuff while we're talking about right clicking that you can do. Uh, you can right click to open something obviously. You can right click to open it with something that is not its default application. Uh, you can move it to the trash. You could also just drag it to the trash if you wanted to get rid of it. So you can also uh, right click and uh, duplicate it, create another copy of the file. Um, another way to do that would just be to right click copy and then right click out here in the folder and paste. So that's an option too. Uh, and finally you can right click and compress. And that'll just create a zip file. Um, there's no way to drag more files into this zip file. So if you want to do multiple files you need to select them all, right click and compress. If you want to do an entire folder, which I often find to be easier, you would right click and compress. So I'm just going to delete these two things here, and I'm going to do that by holding down the uh, command key to select multiple files. Sorry. And then you can just use that icon up there that I've created or drag it down to the trash can. Okay, so what else have we got? Um, we can right click to create an alias. Uh, so if I make an alias, you'll see that it makes a, a copy of it with that little kind of arrow there. Uh, let me see if I can, I'm actually going to put Finder into a different view, this cover flow view, just because it makes the icons a lot bigger. Um, go back to my Documents folder, let's go to Places, Documents, and then scroll through until we see that software alias. Oop, there it goes. And you can see it's got that little arrow that kind of tells you this isn't the real folder, it's just a, a well Windows calls it a shortcut uh, that takes you to that. So let's quit the cover flow view there. So I can take this software alias, move it anywhere. Um, to edit the title on this, I'm just going to hit enter and type my new title. And now this will let me quickly get to the contents of that folder right from my desktop. Or if I don't want that, I can just delete it. And then I think probably the last thing, and we need to do this with a file, is um, we can make some changes with Automator. So there's a few things that are kind of built in here. Automator, um, well, Automator is, is this step. Um, I haven't created any workflows. We'll talk about creating workflows in a later nugget. Um, I can also send it to a Bluetooth device. 
um, if I have a Bluetooth device hooked up. And depending on the different devices and capabilities that your particular Mac has, uh, you'll have different options here on this right-click menu. Um, so this is this is vaguely like the send to menu in Windows, but it's not exact because it, you don't tend to get as many different options here. And oh, the last thing, uh, you'll see this on the right-click menu. Quick look. Um, there's an easier way to get to this though, and it's uh, it's using the space bar. So let me actually let me dive in and take a look at something a little more complicated than an RTF file. Maybe this uh, this PowerPoint. You can see that the Mac in the preview here is actually showing a preview of the contents of the file, and if I click space bar, it brings that document up, its contents, in this pop-up window. So I can I can get a a quick look at the contents of the file without actually having to open the entire application. Now it's not always the greatest thing in the world. Um, you'll notice especially in Word docs like you know I'm getting these little squares instead of the real bullets and that's because Quick Look isn't reading the font correctly. Uh, so it's not always perfect but it's a great preview because it comes up almost instantaneously. When you're done with it you can uh, either click the X there or you can just hit spacebar to make it go away. So that's a really, really nice feature. If you're, you're scrolling through a whole mess of files and it's like, man, I, I forget exactly which one of these was the document I wanted, you can just hit the space bar, um, actually use the arrow keys while that quick look window is open to scroll through all the files and quick look each of them. And then when you find the one you want, you can close quick look and open up the real application to start working on the file. So let's talk about application management. Uh, kind of got a good look at files and folders there. As I said earlier, most of your applications are going to live in this global system-wide applications folder. Uh, it has subfolders. You know, you'll see things like the Apple Script folder. Um, there's utilities, which are ones that uh, Apple has installed by default, and all of these are applications. And the Mac's the Mac's kind of hiding something here. A little secret. It looks like every single one of these is just one big file. Um, if I right-click it and say Get Info. It, it behaves like a file. You know, it's got the general information and it's got sharing and permissions and all this other stuff. So it looks and behaves like a file, but it's not. If I right click it and say open package contents, we see that each application on a Mac is actually a package. Uh, not unlike um, maybe a specialized kind of zip file. And the contents are where the actual application lives. So if we get under the Mac OS folder in here, we see this dashboard. Uh, and this is a Unix executable file, so this is what's actually being executed. So when you double click one of these application packages, uh, what's happening is the, the Mac is opening the package, going in, finding this executable, uh, double clicking it for you, actually launching the executable, and that's what makes the, the application actually run. It is a phenomenally bad idea to go playing around in here. It's okay to look. Um, there are some really advanced troubleshooting things you can do inside of a package, but for the most part, let's leave that closed. Now the neat thing about having all of the applications support files uh, and everything, uh, let, let's take a really good look, when I, uh, a good one, and I'll show you what I mean by uh, support files. Oh, here we go. iCal's pretty good. Let's show the package contents, and when we look at the contents, uh, and go under resources, you can see that we've got all the different icons and its its help files and different graphics that it uses and everything is all bundled into this package. So the neat part about that is moving this application is as simple as dragging the file. If you needed to copy this application to another Mac, now iCal happens to come with all Macs so you wouldn't need to, but if you did need to copy an application you would just copy this package it's all self-contained. And the best thing is if you want to get rid of an application, there's no complicated uninstall or you won't find anything on the system preferences for getting rid of an application. You just drag the application's package to the trash. Now you will leave a few things behind. Remember we said we had this library and a lot of applications can store preferences and stuff and that's what you'd be leaving behind. Um, kind of the same stuff that might go into the Windows registry. So, you know, you could go into here, and in fact, let's go to my library under application support, and uh, we've got, you know, if I had the DVD player, I've got my DVD preferences, so here's all of its settings under here. If I decided to delete that application, I would, I would possibly want to come in here just to clean up after myself and delete this folder as well. Need to be a little careful, you know, don't 
Don't go crazy deleting application support stuff. Uh, although the nice thing is that if something is written the right way, if, if, if the application is written the way Apple wants it to be written, deleting this folder, even if I still have the application installed, won't be a big tragedy. When I run the application the next time, it'll see that it, it doesn't have any application support folder, and so it will recreate the default one. And that's another neat thing about Apple applications. When you install an Apple app, most of the time, or a Mac app, I, I guess I should say, not just something that comes from Apple, most of the time, all you're doing is dragging the application from a DVD into your Applications folder. There's no installation process. So applications on a Mac are accustomed to things not being set up for them. If they need a Settings folder, they're used to creating it. So if you accidentally delete it, they'll just create it again. And in fact, that's not a bad way if you've got a user who's been using an application uh, and they've maybe just really messed it up and you want to delete their preferences and start over. Really, most of the time, all you need to do is just that. Go into their library, delete their preferences, and the application will start over. It'll assume, oh, I must have been freshly installed, so I, I need to create an all-new settings folder for myself. And that's what it'll do. Um, so it's kind of an easy way to, to troubleshoot, really. So I guess the last thing we need to talk about in this nugget is the search functionality. Um, Macs are always sitting around and indexing all of your computer's contents in the background, kind of invisibly behind the scenes. Um, not unlike the Windows uh, desktop search feature in newer versions of Windows. And the way you would utilize that is to come up to this little magnifying glass in the menu bar. This is called Spotlight. So when I click on that, um, let's type drop. And this is going to find all the things that contain the word drop, such as my, my oops, moved away from it, click on it again, um, such as my, my calendar entry here for dropping off my rental car on my next trip, uh, as well as my Dropbox. And if I kind of click on this, it'll just go ahead and open that up and take me right to it. So Spotlight is a, a real, and you saw that it was a pretty quick thing too. It's a quick way to find across everything on the computer, your, your calendar, your mail, images, PDF documents, web pages, anything. And uh, you can come down here to the bottom and click on Spotlight Preferences. And this will let you configure what Spotlight includes. Um, so we can, oops, let me move this to the middle of the screen here. We can have it include applications, uh, system preferences, all these different things. And when you install new applications, they can install Spotlight capabilities. So this list has the potential to change over time. In the Privacy tab, prevents Spotlight from searching in particular locations, uh, places where you don't want things popping up. Maybe if it's uh, some confidential work information and you don't want that popping up in the list. Uh, so that's a way to quickly find everything across your entire Mac, um, all of its files, applications, and everything else. In this nugget, we've looked at all the different ways of managing files and applications on your Mac. We looked at the finder orientation. Uh, we spent some time figuring out how to go from place to place, and I kind of showed you how the file structure on the Mac breaks down, uh, where you'll find various system things and stuff like that. We also looked at managing files, folders, and applications. Uh, keep in mind, an application on a Mac is usually just a packaged file. Uh, uninstalling is just a matter of deleting. Installing is usually just a matter of copying it over there. And we looked at Spotlight. The way that you can search everything on your Mac to uh, find files, folders, applications, and what have you. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank